Hi, I'm Brian Contos, Chief Security Strategist with Imperva. Today's educational demonstration is on SQL injection. So the website I'm using today is called SuperVeda. This is a laboratory test system that we use for analyzing various types of attacks and mitigation steps. Now, like any e-commerce site, you have the ability to log in and authenticate. You can look at various products. You can drill down into the details and essentially interact like you would on any other site where you are potentially going to purchase an item. Okay, so now you know what SuperVeda is. Let's go ahead and play around with the login capabilities. So I'm going to log in with a user account that I'm pretty sure doesn't exist. Username Brian, password Brian. Sure enough, it says invalid username or password. Doesn't really give me a whole lot of useful information, though, beyond knowing that that account doesn't work. Now let's try an account that I do know exists, which is Bugs Bunny, or Bugs B. And Bugs Bunny, I happen to know, has the password carrots. I'm just going to simply cut that and paste it in. And we've logged in, and it says, Hello, bugs. So now we know what things are supposed to look like when they go right. So let's go ahead and try to do a little bit of basic SQL injection now. Let's go ahead and just log in again. And this time, I'm going to use a username that won't really look like a username at all. I'm going to use apostrophe, space, or, space one, apostrophe, space equals, apostrophe one. Basically, I'm saying one equals one in this statement. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it, and see what happens. Wow, look at that. We're actually able to log in. And it says, hello, Mickey. Well, I didn't use the username Mickey, so why is it telling me I'm Mickey? Well, essentially, this is probably the most basic of all SQL injection attacks. I'm injecting the SQL statement into the page's code, and this is creating a true statement. Again, one equals one. And it just happens to be that Mickey is the first user within the database. So the system says, well, I, I, I really just don't know who to pick, so I'm simply going to grab the first user who just happened to be Mickey. Now, when people first see this, they say, wow, this is a pretty standard signature. Why don't I just use an IDS or an IPS with that signature to look for that statement and detect or block the attack? Well, you could do that, but you'd be building a lot of signatures without even getting into, you know, talks about... Uh, encoding and some more advanced characteristics of SQL injection, let's just say that there's a lot of ways to make a true statement. And I'll just share a couple of those just so you can see that it's not as basic as you might think in terms of signature matching. So we did one equals one, but another thing that we could simply say is, so very similar so far, now I'm just going to say A equals A. So essentially I said, look at the statement where it's true if A equals A. I'm going to copy and paste that now into the password. Wow, look at that. I was able to log in as Mickey again. And just to stress the point a little bit more, there's lots of other things. It's not always just simply saying 1 equals 1 or A equals A. In some systems, there's a few more parameters you need to type in. So for example, I might want to say that pass or password, let's say password, or 1 equals 1. Essentially, I'm doing the exact same thing with these commands that I did in the previous ones. And again, I'm able to log it as Mickey. But let's say we don't want Mickey, and maybe we're looking for another user. We don't really know what the users are in the system, so we can do a couple different uh, things to uh, get Mickey out of the equation. So let's go ahead and log in again. And I'm just going to use our old uh, uh, SQL injection, or 1 equals 1. But now I'm actually going to use an apostrophe and close that off. And I'm going to put an AND statement. And I'm going to say that the first name 
isn't equal to Mickey. So pretty much we have the exact same SQL statement. We're saying 1 equals 1. This has to be true. I've just added an AND statement and said, in addition to 1 equaling 1 being a true statement, I want to make sure that this first name isn't Mickey. Pretty straightforward. Again, let's copy and paste and see what happens. Wow, now I've logged in again successfully, and I've logged in as Donald. Okay, that's pretty cool. And again, just to take this a little bit further, maybe I really don't want Mickey or Donald. Or maybe I just want to keep on enumerating this and see how far it goes. So I'm just going to paste that same statement in. 1 equals 1 true, and first name isn't equal to Mickey. But now I'm also going to say, let me close off Mickey here, and first name isn't equal to Donald. And now we log on as Bugs. And that lets you know how I knew uh, who one of the users was previously. And of course, you can do this as long as you desire, as long as you continue to find more and more users. For more information on Imperva and how to mitigate these attacks, please visit imperva.com. Also be sure to check out our blog, our podcast on iTunes, our other videos on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter.